Precious Lord Jesus, we thank you. You are the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen. Lord, you do not change. Your love for us doesn't change. Yes, Lord. You're rich in mercy, Lord. Rich in mercy and great in love. Hallelujah. We're with and uh, you have loved us. Lord God, if nothing good happens to us uh, physically or in any other way, uh, your love on the cross is more than enough, Lord. But we thank you that every day your mercies are new. Every day your mercy is new, every morning. Lord God, we thank you for these mercies that are new. And Lord, now we turn to your word. Uh, we thank you for every book in the Bible. Every book in the Bible. Lord, you, uh, you confirmed every Old Testament book. And Lord, we also read that they are the shadow. We thank you for teaching us many things. Lord, everyone who is hearing on uh, the video, uh, Lord, we pray that you will open their ears to hear what you are going to say. Have your way with us, Lord. Everything that I speak, may I be careful to hear you and may I be willing to receive it and give it to your children. Lord God, I depend on you. Holy Spirit, you are the only one who can speak effectively to your children. You're the only one who can change lives. You can, you can, you're the only one who can transform lives. So we turn to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Have you been with us this evening? Hallelujah. 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 As I told you before, you can put your camera on if you like and look in my eyes and even answer if there is a, a question asked. Praise God. Praise and glory be to Jesus. Everybody, welcome in the house of God. Welcome in this meeting. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. And if there's a question, please uh, be sure that you try to answer the question. Hallelujah. Thank you, sister. Praise and glory. And if I speak to someone, don't worry about that. I was speaking to a young lady <coughs> this, uh, this evening in a far country. And uh, as usual, she was again complaining. She also gave a verse uh, that God will answer. Uh, she had got a history of uh, uh, violence, history of uh, uh, abusive behavior from uh, the husband. And uh, she came out for a little while and then she went back. And uh, again today, she was complaining that when will God hear me? Uh, it seemed in this little two words only, uh, when will God hear me? And uh, I could sense that there's a trouble again. And uh, I said, what happened? Has he said something else today? And she said, of course, you know, he has been not very good. And I told her, listen, he is a son of Adam and he is born with the nature. I think he doesn't know the Lord and neither you do the Lord. <laughs> you don't, don't know the Lord as well. And uh, I think she, she was quiet because she, she knows that she doesn't know the Lord yet. Uh, but she's born in a Christian family, of course. And, uh, and I said, listen, why do you force him to be good? Well, I'm saying this because I said something in the message on Sunday and I want to explain myself. And uh, I think I was hard on some people uh, because of what I was trying to tell you. What I was trying to tell was uh, uh, John the Baptist picked up fight with Herod. It's not good to pick up fight with kings, is it right? Uh, he was just a man on the Jordan River and he picked a fight with Herod. Uh, Herod was openly sinning and uh, John the Baptist knew the danger of his sin because his sin means uh, he will be affecting many people. He's a leader. 
when a leader sins, then the sin spreads in the society. People begin to copy the leaders. Uh, that is why devil would love to uh, love to cause leaders sin because if leader can sin, uh, he can affect many people. So I was telling this story and I was also telling us, I mean us, that when you see someone sinning and uh, you see that uh, the sin of that person is uh, affecting the people around, uh, then you have to confront and uh, you have to tell them that, listen, you are not independent. You must change because you are damaging other people. And then uh, today, again, I was reminded and the Lord said to me, what are you trying to force on people? Uh, how, can, uh, how can they change someone who is not born again? How can they change someone who is a son or daughter of Adam? And the Lord reminded me that Adam's nature is sinful. If they have got sinful nature, uh, will you try to tell them not to sin? This is what they naturally do. Well, that's what God was confronting me. And I'm sorry if I've been a bit heavy on you. And uh, the Lord reminded me that he should not be heavy on my people. They're dealing with the natural people. Uh, they are dealing with the sons and the daughter of Adam, and Adam sins. It doesn't matter what religion he belongs to. It doesn't matter what uh, uh, kind of person he thinks he is. Uh, thinking won't, uh, won't make you what you think. You may think good, but if uh, the actions are not proper, then you're not good. So I was telling this lady, I said, listen, uh, if uh, if you make some arrangement, we can start some Zoom meeting with you. Uh, you can start this meeting in your home, and I will speak to your uh, husband. I will speak to your uh, your family, and uh, you can gather friends. I said, if you can gather some friends, and then I said we will make arrangements and we will have a Zoom meeting. That's the only solution. I said to this lady, you're very intelligent. You're very nice. But you're talking about something impossible. I said, you came out of the house and then you went to go back home. And I said, I'm not going to give you a counsel on that because I cannot guarantee that the man is changed. Uh, the man is not changed, so he will be doing the same things. So God's people, I want to remind ourselves again, uh, if someone is out of order and he is troubling people around, he is doing some damage, uh, you cannot tell them don't sin. What else can the person do? Uh, what else can he do? If the nature of a person is sinful, if he is born with the sinful uh, nature, if his uh, bloodline is Adam, and he has not come into the race of Christ yet. What else can he do? And uh, then I was reminded a story, a story of a very intelligent man living in the neighborhood. And uh, he wanted to prove to the neighbors that uh, swine can be changed. Swine's attitude can be changed. I'll show you. So he told the neighbor, I'm going to take a little pretty uh, piggy and a swine, I should say, or whatever you want. And I'm going to teach that swine good things. I'm going to powder it every day. I'm going to give it a bath. And uh, if you want to check it out, you can come to my house and she will be very beautifully smelling uh, pig. And uh, they didn't argue with me. And uh, some of the intelligent people who have read the Bible, they knew that uh, uh, the swine, doesn't matter how good bath it, it receives, it will go to, uh, go to the mud. And so he kept it in a very, uh, very controlled environment. And uh, the piggy looked so beautiful, swine looked so beautiful, smell was coming out of it. He, he will powder it and he will make it so beautiful. But one day by mistake, the door was kept 
open. And as soon as the pigs smelt <laughs> some mud from far off, it ran to the mud. And of course, that was pig. I'm giving a very crude example, but it applies to us human being. It applies to human race. It doesn't matter how much you teach them. It doesn't matter how many fasting they are keeping. It doesn't matter how many times they pray. They open their mouth and filth comes out. They try to do some good work and they cannot do. And the evil works they cannot do, they end up doing. So God's people, we will talk about this a little bit in this lesson today in Ephesians. And let's read another verse that was in my mind uh, that was coming, and I thought I'll share with you. The supreme sacrifice of uh, Christ has been offered. Price has been paid. Sin of the sinner is not imputed to them. You ask me, is it automatic? I would say, no, sir, it's not automatic. It is uh, uh, optional. It is uh, up to the person. Is he willing to receive what Jesus has done on the cross or not? Is he willing to receive uh, from the Lord what he has done on the cross? And I just want to read this verse, uh, Second Chronicles, uh, no, Second Corinthians chapter 5. And I will just go to the last verse. The magnitude of the sacrifice is universal. He died for the sin of the world. He was, uh, he was uh, predicted or he was prophesied over and over again in the scripture. Uh, in fact, the very first uh, prophetic scripture that was uh, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. It was about uh, bruising his heel, and he was supposed to crush the head of the serpent of the devil. Now this is uh, the uh, this is the I should I would say the uh, in nutshell what happened on the cross uh, to our Lord Jesus. Verse twenty one: For he hath made him. This is uh, uh, the reality of the sacrifice of the Lord. This is the magnitude of the sacrifice of the Lord. And I tell you, it was the blood shed by the Son of God. I won't go in detail, but uh, there's a man, Ron White, and uh, he found out uh, the Ark of the Covenant. He was told to just cover it and don't try to publish it. Uh, but uh, he saw uh, that uh, that Ark of the Covenant right under Calvary. And uh, somehow on the, on the Ark of the Covenant, from top, there was a hole. And that hole, and through that hole, blood came, and that blood came on the mercy seat. So he couldn't take the Ark of the Covenant out, but he took the sample of the blood. And the sample of the blood, he took it. I think I sent that video to you. If you still have God, you can send to people. And he sent the sample to three laboratories in Israel, in Germany, and in USA. And uh, all of them agreed and they declared after the laboratory test that, uh, yes, one chromosome that are to do with women, they are in the blood. But we wonder why there is no chromosome of man. There was nothing and they were amazed. And he said, I saw the report. He saw the report. So that blood was not ordinary. It was the blood of the son of man and son of God became the son of man. He was sinless lamb of God. And he is the one who sacrificed for the sin of the world. That is why the scripture says, uh, in the in the same uh, passage that God does not impute the sin of anyone. And I have found out if you want to talk to someone and he doesn't know the Lord, it's good to talk to the person in this way and you may give them the good news. You can start the conversation with good news 
And you can ask him, do you know, sir, that none of your sin is imputed to you? I tell you, he will begin to ask you some question uh, because then you raise the standard of his expectation too high. You simply say to the person, do you know that none of your sin is imputed to you? And if you have got time, then and if you have the Bible, you can show him even chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians and verse 18 and 19. It is written in this verse that none of the sin of human being is uh, imputed to them. That means uh, it's a computing term. It is a uh, it's an accountancy term. It is not added to them. Are, uh, they are no more. They are abolished. Automatically, no. If somebody says automatically, or if somebody says universally, then of course it's a heresy. So you don't like heresy, and I don't like heresy. Of course, it's a heresy without acknowledging the sacrifice of Jesus to say that I have not acknowledged Jesus Christ as the Son of God, I have not acknowledged his sacrifice for the sin of the world, but I believe my sins are not imputed. That is, a, that is, that simply means a man is living in a cuckoo land and he does not face his reality. He is living in a fancy world. It doesn't jello. Without the name of Jesus, without his sacrifice, there is no remission of sin. So, for he had, God had, made him, that means Jesus Christ, to be sin for us who knew no sin, who knew no sin. It was a, a, it was a blameless Lamb of God, took the sin of the world upon himself, and died for the sin of the world. Now the sin is not compu uh, imp imputed to them who believe in him, who knew no sin, uh, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. God's people, I would like to make a very solemn statement. Listen to that statement in view of this, in view of the magnitude of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for the sinner, for every one of the race of Adam, for everyone who is from the line of Adam, and we are all, everybody, even king and queens and everybody, I know their bloodline. Their bloodline is nothing but Adam. That simply means they are born sinner. They're born with sin nature. And until the sin nature is dealt with by the cross, until the sin nature is dealt with by Jesus Christ coming in, they cannot overcome sin. A solemn statement I'm going to make to you, and this is the magnitude of the supreme sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why I'm making this a statement in view of the magnitude of the sacrifice of Jesus. Now listen to this statement. If you want to write it, it will be good. I will I'll read slowly and you can write this statement. Anyone who rejects, anyone who rejects or ignores such a great sacrifice, anyone who rejects or ignores such a great sacrifice will spend paying for that sin has to be judged and he will not be able to pay it. Every sin has to be judged because Bible says very clearly that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And that was something. And what happened was sin has to be judged. That's what I'm trying to say. And it was judged in the flesh of Jesus. Praise and glory be to Jesus. Let's read two verses and then we come to our a message, I thought I should uh, say these things. Maybe someone is listening and he doesn't know the Lord. Maybe someone is listening and he does not follow the Lord the way he should follow. I'll just read two verses and then we will move on to our lesson. Uh, we will go to the book of Ephesians chapter 2, uh, one, one, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, and I'm going to read verse 24. Of course, you may know this verse by heart, but let me read it to you anyway. Who his own self, talking about Jesus, bear our sin in his own body. He was given a body. Uh, it was formed in the womb of Mother Mary 
and he had a body but without sin without sin he had flesh without sin but let me make this statement as well and you can question if you like when he was in gethsemane and when he said to the father three times if it's possible let this cup pass away from me but god the father spoke very loudly through silence that it cannot be done there is no other way he was telling the lord you are the way cross is the way your sacrifice is the only way it is not the best way no no it is the only way who his own self bear our sin in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin that is what we need to believe and we must reckon should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye are here so that was the first and uh, i just wanted to say and then another scripture i want to read before we move any further uh, john chapter 16 and verse 8 and 9 these are the facts god's people and if anyone is listening and doesn't matter whether he is born in a christian family or any other religious family he must come to the lord to be saved there is no other name under heaven by which they can be saved there is only one name and his name is jesus and he's the only one who has claimed to be i am the way the truth and the life and he said that very clearly no one comes to the father but by me there is no other way there is no other life and there's no other truth if there is another truth that jesus is alive and of course none of uh, the people of his time prove that he was alive none of the religious books tell that he was a sinner he was the sinless lamb of god i want to read verse uh, two verses please please eight and nine and when he is come talking about the holy spirit that's why but I, i was saying uh, i was when i was explaining let the holy spirit do the work i don't force a sinner not to sin what else can he do or what else will he do if he has got a sin nature of course he was naturally sin and when he is come holy spirit will come he will prove the world of sin he will prove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment sin of righteousness and of judgment of sin why of sin because they believe not on me that's the sin that will take people to hell only sin that take a person to hell and that is unbelief in the son of god not believing jesus and not believing his sacrifice so god's people these were the things i wanted to uh, just uh, just share with you now come to the book of ephesians and uh, i believe we are enjoying the book of ephesians and uh, i would like you to give your uh, uh, expression as well or tell us also what you're learning uh, read it and uh, you may add something that i have not said but god's people this is a rich book i will just start with the verse 3 again you say we have read it before i've been thinking about it again and i just wanted to share with you few things again uh just few thoughts and then we will move on to other uh, other areas and we can't rush into this book and we will take it easy we will take it slowly and we will learn it what's the use if i have preach many sermon and you have not taken any one of them on board it is taking on board is believing it is receiving and it is putting it in your heart and then uh, bearing fruit with the seed that is sown whatever i'm trying to say i'm saying lord let me sow a seed in the life of your people so that it will grow and it will bear much fruit So verse three, once again, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessing. That's a marvelous promise. All spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. 
every blessing is ours, but they are ours in Christ. If we are in Christ and he is in us, the, so this word speaks about relationship. This word speaks about relation. And what kind of relation? I in them, they in me. And uh, the relationship the Lord is talking about uh, is better to read it. This is the relationship. And God's people, these relationship, we need to remind ourselves over and over again. Because the relationship we are invited to are not our private relationship, but we are invited to the relationship. What relationship? The relationship that are between Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have expressed it many times clearly that uh, God is Spirit. God is one. And he has manifested himself in three. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Jesus spoke many times, I have come out of the Father. He also claimed, I read sometime and in some videos, when did Jesus say he is God. Anyone who has read this, uh, have you? Uh, that's very viral video, but very foolish as well. Uh, very viral video. Uh, where did Jesus said, I am God? Oh, my, my friend, have you never read? When he asked him, show us the Father, and he was calling God the Father. Philip asked Jesus, show us the Father, that will suffice. What did Jesus say? Philip. I have been with you for such a long time. And then Jesus spoke very clearly, uh, have you not seen me, Philip? And then he said, he who has seen me has seen the Father. And then he said, I and my Father are one. And uh, oh, show me where Jesus said, I am God. What did you mean? What did you think he said? Did he not say I'm God when he said, I and my Father are one. When he said, Father living in me doing the work, is he not one with the Father? Is he not one with the Father? When, did, when, when he said, I have come out of the Father, did he not say, I'm God? If somebody comes out of God, what do you think he will be? Well, you, you better write to those people or make comment on these and tell them when someone says, I and Father are one, you have seen me as seen the Father. And when someone says, I came out of the Father, if you come out of something, you are the same. If I'm come out of something, I am. I'm come out of human being, I'm human being. And he came out of God, he is God. Oh yes, God was living in the light which no one can approach. But he came out of the light, became a man, so that we may, may approach that light. God's people, that was the mercy of God. That was the way we can, uh, we can have fellowship with God. But this relationship, but this verse that we have just been hearing is to do with relationship. It is relationship that exists between Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I just want to read a few verses to you. And uh, uh, you can quote to some people, say, where did Jesus say, uh, I am God. You tell me, what do you think he is saying? He is one with the Father. And you are trying to tell me that, uh, where did he say he is God? I'm read, going to read from verse 21 for the sake of the time, but I will recommend God's people that you read the whole chapter. Jesus is speaking here wonderfully about this relationship. And Ephesians 1 verse 3 is all about relationship. We have got every blessing, every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. It is in Christ. That simply means it is relational. That simply means it has nothing to do with religion. It is not a religious issue. It is a relational thing, God's people. That's what Jesus is saying. These are the words of our Lord Jesus. That they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me, there goes your word, did Jesus say, I'm God. <laughs> there goes your falsehood and trying to prove something that has got no basis. Listen to Jesus. That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I 
in the, what do you mean he is trying to say? He's trying to say, I'm God. He's trying to say, a father is in me. I am in the father. It's a spiritual relationship. Spirit cannot be seen. Spirit can be mixed. Spirit uh, can be divided. Do you remember when uh, Moses could not do the business of uh, uh, making justice of the people? God said, bring them out and 70 elders. And I will take spirit, some spirit of all of you, and I will put it on them. Spirit is like that. You don't understand spirit, God's people. He says in verse 21, that they all may be one. He's talking about us. That is again relational. He's talking about relationship. They all may be, oh, only if God's people could do it. Only if the church can show the world. If we can show we are one, we will be testifying with such force. But the problem is the doctrine have divided the church. Only if they will believe in Jesus. Only if Jesus will have the central place and the doctrines will not have central place for every church, then the world will see the power of God. And they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us. One in us. So it's not my private relationship with God. No, no. It is because of the sacrifice that Jesus offered for me. I am allowed. I have been offered to join into relationship with Trinity. God's people, that is marvelous. The other day, Angelo was praying and he said, if only David could know what we have, he would give everything for that. Everything. What do we have? We have got the life of Christ. We have got divine life. We have got the life of God Almighty. We have the creative life. Why don't we see that life? Because we see ourselves still a lot. Once we are out of the way, a man was saying, I said to the Lord, what shall I do to be very uh, profitable? The Lord said, get out of my way. <laughs> Just be a vessel and let me work. Let me work. When you will stop working, I will do it. That is called in the scripture, entering into the rest of God. I want to be very simple. Entering into the rest of God, to the glory of God. Amen. And I in thee, that they also may be one in us. That is relationship. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Why the world doesn't believe that Jesus was sent by God Almighty for them to be saved? Why do they cling to their own religion? Why like, uh, like this man who went into the, unto the sycamore tree, Everybody is uh, upon the tree of their religion. I believe the Lord through his people can come under that tree. And he said, you can say to them, come down. I'm going to go to your house today. Everybody has got own tree. Every religion, variety of religion. Some people say, my religion is more modern than your religion. It's not religion you need, sir. It is uh, a person. It is a savior. You need relationship. You are lost without relationship. It doesn't matter how many prayers you pray. It doesn't matter how many wishful thinking you have in heaven. There will be none. Without Christ, you're not going there. You are disconnected from Eden. Your connection cannot be without Jesus. Jesus is the only one who said, no one comes to the Father but by me. Why? He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Verse 22, and the glory which thou hast given me. Oh, now is relationship building up. Now is relationship shaping up God's people. And uh, that's why I need to put everything into this relationship. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. When I gave my life and when I came in them, this relationship comes when he comes in. God says, be holy because I am holy. Can anyone be holy? No. Adam's race cannot be holy. 
Adam cannot be holy. Adam is holy only when the Holy One comes in. When Jesus comes in and he takes over, it's a matter, or I should say it is an issue of possession. How much does he possess me? That makes the difference how much he is formed in me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. Praise God that they may be one even as we are one. We are one. He's talking about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We are one and they will be one with us. So he is inviting us to this enormous relationship. Relationship that exists between God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You say, how could this be? Because of the magnitude of the person. Because of the Son of God who became the Son of Adam. And because he was willing to lay down his life. That's why. If God the Son will be willing to become a man. A son of Adam. Second Adam. And then be willing to uh, make his flesh sinful flesh. And then have all the punishment on the sinful flesh. Why would everyone not be free? His blood is sufficient for everybody. Let's go quickly. Father, I will. This is my desire. This is what I desire. That they also whom thou hast given me be one where I am. Again, it comes relationship. Again, it comes uh, uh, the, the dwelling places. Again, it comes to the same teaching that we have been given. God wants men and women their dwelling places through Jesus Christ. I am, and that they behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou loved me before the foundation of the world. It's getting better all the time. Oh, righteous Father, he's praying for us. And I tell you, he prays, and every word is heard. O oh, righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And that last verse is mind-boggling. Any natural man will say, how can that be? But it can only be understood by the Holy Spirit. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it. That the love, listen to this, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me, the love wherewith thou hast, the same love, there is no difference, the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. Any one of us will be willing to put everything on the line just to receive this. Same love that Father has for the Son, the same love He has bestowed on each and every one of us. It doesn't matter what happens to me here, how much I suffer. That is, is something that cannot be compared with anything. So, uh, as, as we come to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, God's people, when you read this, you can just stop it and rejoice. Every spiritual blessing are in Christ. They are in me because of relationship. And we have just, uh, uh, just read, the, read, the, uh, read beautifully, elaborated the relationship. And that is God's people that can cheer you up. If all day you have been under doom and gloom, that will cheer you up. And you will begin to run like a man or a woman. And uh, you will not be in disparity. So, blessed be the God. Listen to this verse again as we proceed on. Uh, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. And this can be uh, put in another way. And let me read another verse to you, and you can put it on if you like. Second. Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 16 again. It is spiritual God's people. When Jesus was speaking to the people uh, in Gospel of John and he was telling them until you eat my flesh and drink my blood, they were thinking is literal. No, sir. He said it very clearly in verse 63. 
my words are spirit and they are life they couldn't understand they were so caught up with physical emotions that they couldn't think anything better than physical but jesus was talking about spiritual thing when we talk about eating of jesus that means doing his will you see how could you conclude so quickly well i heard from jesus when they brought him food do you remember in samaria and they wanted him to eat and they said rabbi eat and he said i am eating food that you do not do not know and then jesus explained my food is to do the will of my father so what was he eating doing the will of his father so when we do the will of our lord jesus christ we are eating him and until you eat him you don't grow how do you eat him by doing his will how do we eat him by doing his command how do we eat him by spending time with him how do we eat him by praising him worshiping him by giving him the first place god people this is the only way we can do it verse 16 says wherefore henceforth you can make a decision for each other wherefore henceforth that means from this moment on henceforth no we no man after the flesh no man and when we say man and woman we we understand that in christ there is no woman no man there is no jew there is no gentile everyone these things man woman jew gentile they are only found in adam in christ they're not there in christ there is only the new creation is in christ there is not woman no and uh, the man they all one in Christ in other words if i'm the bride you are the son can you understand the difference some some person will not understand these are the terms that are used for love relationship god's people and so they apply to women and when men together the, therefore he says in verse 16 the, wherefore henceforth no we no man after the flesh yeah though we have known christ after the flesh that's why i don't keep any photographs of christ in my home that's why it's not a good idea to make make the photograph of christ and those who have done it tell them this get them this verse i think they will stop it if you are so effective praise god though we have known christ after the flesh yet now henceforth no we him no more we don't even know christ after the, it's not jesus of nazareth my friend it's jesus christ the son of the living god god's people jesus of nazareth was a, limited in one place at one time but now he is living he's dwelling his kingdom is established in many people this is our lord jesus christ so uh, let's move on further regards people i just want to tell you this book is so marvelous so wonderful we have a joint interrelationship we are one with him in spirit he was joined to the lord is one spirit with him same way we have been studying i just want to remind this and then we will close it uh, we have been studying about uh, uh, about adoption adoption was, was predestined in christ uh, that simply mean you may opt out you can go out of that purpose of god or proposal of god but uh, it was predestinated uh, as adoption i told you adoption doesn't uh, come from uh, from that system we believe it's not uh, uh, a child taken from another family it is a child born to a man and he is a rich man and what he does is child is brought under the trainer and when he comes to an age when he has come to a certain level of maturity then father calls the neighbor and the friends and then he makes a declaration there this is my beloved son just like god did to jesus in the same way he declares today this child of mine 
Wa is my son. That simply means he is no more under the guardian. He is independent now in me. In me, he is now walking and he, so that is adoption. And we will go on in this, uh, uh, in this lesson in the days to come. Oh, but God's people today, if you can only remember this relational thing, every spiritual blessing is in Christ. Where is Christ? At the right hand of the Father. Where are you, spiritually speaking, at the right hand of the Father? Where you're sitting, where Christ is sitting, in heavenly places in Christ, is written here. And so, uh, keep looking down. Uh, <laughs> someone must say, I'm not sure, keep looking down. People say, keep looking up. I say, it depends where you're sitting. If you're sitting in Christ, in Christ, in heavenly places, then uh, the demonic forces and every force is down. So it's uh, all right to say, keep looking down, God's people. Looking down at the demonic forces, looking down at the circumstances, looking down at things that bother you. Trust in him. He can handle every situation. Let him do it. Take your hand off and simply say, Lord, I'll let you handle it. I have been trying this over and over again. Today, I say yes to you, and I will take my hand off. Because if God, if you would ask God, what shall I do? God would simply say, Angelo, could you get out of the way and let me handle this? If something is wrong with you, if someone has wronged something to you, I'm the one who takes revenge. Vengeance is mine. Don't take what is mine. That belongs to me. Don't take in your hand. Just forgive. Love your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you. And that's the only way I can deal with them. Be like Moses. Moses did not speak. When Moses did not speak, they were punished who were against Moses. So God's people cheer up. You have every blessing in heavenly places in Christ. It has to do with the relationship. Focus on relationship. And remember these words of Jesus. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all the other things shall be added unto you. Let's pray. And thank God for this relationship. Whether your mind receives it or not, it doesn't matter. It's my prayer that it will bypass our mind and it will go right in your spirit. And in the spirit, something wonderful begins to take place. Spirit that becomes powerful in you, but your own spirit becomes stronger. It can handle then the soul and the mind and everything. I've been very simple today. God's people, it has to do with the different nature. Nobody can change nature. No, no. You can drive out demon, but self, you cannot drive. Self has to be brought to the place of death. Self must be denied. Lord, we pray that we will understand that uh, no one can change a sinner from being sinner into a saint. It's an impossibility, Lord. Only you come in and you replace the nature. You replace the nature, sinful nature of Adam. And you, you just place your own nature in us. When you come, your nature comes. And your nature is placed in us. For this, we are so relaxed and so joyful. It's our prayer that people will hear what the scriptures say and will stop struggling not to sin, but let Jesus in and he will place his own nature in them so that they will be different people. It's possible only in Christ, Lord, we know it. We are so thankful it happened. Lord, we want to keep on growing in this new nature. That is the nature of the Lamb, and we want to live it up every day. 
to the glory of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.